Okay, can you see the screen, students? Yes, beta. Yes, ma'am. Is visible? Yeah. Okay. So uh, this tutorial sheet is about the chain rule and uh, the derivatives, partial derivatives, right? Which we have done in the like, two, three lectures back. And also the diff uh, directional derivatives. So have you tried this sheet? Yes, Peter? No, ma'am. Okay, so uh, it's, it's quite simple, actually. Uh, I will tell you uh, in brief, then you can try, okay? And also uh, for tomorrow's test, it will start at seven, okay? It is for half an hour. Is that okay, Peter? So you will get your link on LMS as well as on our site, course website, official website, which is the Google site. So you can find the link. Link will exactly open at seven. So you, you can see the link only around like seven. You will not see the link before that. And it will close the, I think, uh, yeah, exactly at 7.30, the responses uh, will be closed. You will not be able to submit your response after 7.30. So make sure that you are submitting your paper at 7.29, I will recommend. Is that okay, Vita? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so don't do this thing that, uh, as we do in the physical exam, that we are writing more things in the last minute. So that will be, uh, useless for you people. Agar aap waisa karoge, so aapka submit nahi hoga, it will not be counted. Okay. So even uh, I will recommend you can uh, you can uh, just ignore last one minute. You can uh, fix that at seven twenty nine. The moment there is seven twenty nine, you you push on submit. Okay. Even if one question is left, I will recommend that. Okay. Is that okay, beta? Ji, ma'am. So you have to take a care of time. That is what I want to say. Fine. Okay. So uh, let us. There is a technical glitch then. Sorry, beta. Ma'am, if there is a technical glitch, then that is why we are not able to submit then. Yeah, beta. See, see. Now, uh, I mean, that is a different issue. After that, these people will take the decision because this is a coordinated course. So I don't know exactly what uh, what are the things available if if you are unable to, you know. Uh, Submit right. Submit Obviously, it, if yeah. there is a genuine concern, you will get your uh, like you will get something, another chance or something like that. But uh, be careful that you are submitting your paper, okay, beta, so that you don't have anything okay. like later on. You, you don't have to, okay, beta. So let us start. Can you see the uh, questions on the left hand side? Tutorial sheet is visible. Yes, beta. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, so using chain rule, you have to find out dw by dt. Okay, so it's very simple. W is a function of x and y, and then x is a function of y at t, and y is a function of t. So by chain rule, you can very easily do dw by dt will be dw by dx, in then dx by dt. Sorry, partial derivative of w with respect to x because w is a function of two variables x and y. So you will have partial derivatives here curly w by curly x into dx by dt. Why dx by dt? Because x is a function of t only plus curly w by curly y into dy by dt. Right. So this is curly w by curly x is 2x into dx by dt is your minus sine t plus cos t plus dw by dy is your 2y into dy by dt. That is your minus sine t minus cos t and at t equal to zero, you have to compute. Ma'am, can you just, uh, ma'am, can you just tell in short key when to use partial and when to? Use yes, beta. If your function, derivative. if your function is a function of more than one variables, then it means that there is a rate of change of function with respect to x also and with respect to y also. There you will use partials, partial derivatives. If your function is a function of only one variable, then you will use the total derivative, okay? Because there is no meaning of partial here because there is only one okay, uh, uh, variable on which your function is dependent. Here you have two variables on, on which W is dependent. So there is a rate of change of W with respect to X also and rate of change of W with respect to Y also. That is why you have to take two derivatives with respect to X also and with respect to Y also. Is that okay? Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Now you can just put the values of x and y. So here x is your uh, 
cos t plus sin t okay and this is minus sin t plus cos t this i am doing because i have to compute it at t is equal to 0 right so i have to bring everything to t into 2 y is your cos t minus sin t into minus sin t minus cos t now you put t is equal to 0 put t is equal to 0 so you will get this is equal to 2 cos 0 is 1 sin 0 is 0 and then you have minus 0 plus 1 and then you have next term as 2 cos 0 is 1 again minus 0 minus 0 minus 1 right so this is equal to 2 and this is minus 2 so that is 0 okay simple calculations is that thing clear to everybody yes ma'am okay now look at this question uh, you have to find curly z by curly u at u is equal to 0 and v is equal to 1 if these are the things given to you right so let us write it down so you're given uh, z is equal to sin x y z is equal to sin x y plus what is the next term? Can you uh, speak, please? X sine y. Yeah. And then you have X is equal to U square plus V square. Y, y is UV. UV. And then you have to compute curly Z by curly U when U is 0 and V is 1. Right? Now you see, students, here Z is a function of X and Y and X is a function of U and V and Y is a function of U and V. And you want to compute curly z by curly u. So what you will do, you will differentiate z with respect to x and then x with respect to u. Now here, because x is also a function of u and v, that is why you will use partial derivatives here. And then curly z by curly y into curly y by curly u. So that is equal to curly z by curly x is how much? Curly z by curly x is, can you tell me? Cos xy into y. Is that okay? plus curly z by curly x from here also you'll get one term sine y into curly x by curly u that is your 2u you plus curly z by curly y will be cos x y into x plus x cos y into curly y by curly u is v okay now you will put the values of x and y or you can simply say when u is 1 when u is 1 0 and v is 1, x is 1 and y is 0. When u is 0, v is 1, x is u square plus v square, so that will be 0 square plus 1 square, that is 1 and your y is uv, that will be 0. Therefore, you will put y is equal to 0 here, right, so this is 0 and here you will get y 0, x 1, so this is 1, 1 plus 1, into v is your 1. So your answer is 2. Got it? Simple calculations. The only thing which is important is this chain rule. You should know how to do this thing. Fine, Mita? Is that thing clear to everybody? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I'll skip this question 3. You can do it. Similar question. Let's, let us go to question number 4. Can you tell me the statement? So you are given h is a function of x, y, z. x is u plus v plus w. You are given h is a function of x, y, z. x is u plus v plus w. y is, can you tell me? u, v plus v, w plus w, u. Fine. And z is u, v, w. You have to prove what you have to see or you have to compute this thing you have to prove that u into curly h by u plus v into curly h by v plus w into curly h by w is equal to okay x y z so you have to prove u into curly h by curly u plus v into curly h by curly v plus w into curly h by curly w is equal to x into curly h by curly x x into curly h by curly x plus 2y into curly h by curly y plus 3z into curly h by curly z. Can you please try everybody? I'm giving you one minute. Please try.
Okay, so how you will start? You see, you are given h is a function of x, y, and z. So what will be curly h by curly u? X further is a function of u, v, and w. U plus v plus w. Y is again a function of u plus v, u and v and w. So it is u v plus v w plus w u and z is u v w. So you have to see curly h by curly u, and you need curly h by curly v, curly h by curly w. So what will be curly h by curly u? That will be curly h by curly x into curly x by curly u plus curly h by curly y into curly y by curly u plus curly h by curly z into curly z by curly u. Clear? So this is equal to curly h by curly x into curly x by curly u is one plus curly h by curly y into curly y by curly u is how much? Can you tell me? V plus w plus curly h by curly z into curly z by curly u. That is v w. V w. Okay. Now you go for curly h by curly v. That will be curly h by curly x, curly x by curly v, plus curly h by curly y, curly y by curly v, plus curly h by curly z into curly z by curly v. So that will be curly h by curly x into curly x by curly v. You one. can see from here is one plus curly h by curly y into curly y by curly v. You can see from here it is u plus, u plus w. w plus curly h by curly z into curly z by curly v is u w. u w. Fine. Now similarly you can go for curly h by curly w. That will be curly h by curly x. Into curly x by curly w plus curly h by curly y into curly y by curly w plus curly h by curly z into curly z by curly w. So this is curly h by curly x into curly x by curly w is again one plus curly h by curly y into curly y by curly w. You can see from here is v plus u plus curly h by curly z. Into curly z by curly w is u b. Okay, beta. Now in the question you want it to be multiplied with u, it to be multiplied with b, and it to be multiplied by w. So you just call it this equation as one, this equation as two, this equation as three. So you do one into u plus two into w v plus three into w. You see what you will get on the left hand side. You will get u into curly h by curly u. Plus v into curly h by curly v plus w into curly h by curly w and on the right hand side you see what you will get. You will get u into curly h by curly x plus v into curly h by curly y. Sorry. So you will get u from here, v from here, and w from here. So you can take curly h by curly x common. And I'm just multiplying curly h by curly x into u plus v plus w. Is that thing clear? From here you will get u into curly h by curly x. From here you will get v into curly h by curly x. From here you will get w into curly h by curly x. I'm taking curly h by curly x common. Inside you have u plus v plus w. And here you will have curly h by curly y common, right? So you are multiplying it with u. So you will get u v plus u w, and you are multiplying it with v. So you'll get v u plus v w, and you are multiplying it with w. So you'll get v w plus u w. Right? And in the last one, curly h by curly z is common. You are multiplying it with u. So you'll get u v w. It with v. So you'll get u v w. It with w. So you'll get u v w. So it is three u v w. Fine. Now, what is this? This is x. So this is x into curly h by curly x plus what is this? This is two u v, two v w, and two w u. So this is twice time two times y. So this is two y curly h by curly y, and this is three times z. So this is three z curly h by curly z. So it is a simple question. So hence proved.
Got it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, beta. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, I want all of you to try till question number eight. Okay. So you'll try question number five, six, seven, eight yourself. They are similar, based on chain rule. Everybody will do that, right? Now let us go to question number nine, which is on directional derivative. Okay, beta. So I will recommend that tutorial sheets you have to solve yourself so that you get an idea in advance that how, uh, so that you you get something to think for. If I will do it, you will not understand it. Okay, beta. G yes, ma'am. So question number nine. Look, find the directional derivative. Find the directional derivative of the function of the function f x y z is equal to x square minus y square plus two z square at the point p one comma two comma three in the direction of the line PQ, in the direction of the line PQ, where Q has the coordinates five comma zero comma four. Okay, and there is another part in what direction? It will be maximum. It will be maximum. And what's its value? And what is its value? Okay, beta. Everybody, please try this question. Tell me. Answer is already given, but I want you to try. Tell me how you'll solve it. So, uh, you know the, de the definition of direction derivative formula? Anybody? Can you tell me, Vita, please? Okay, how you how you denote directional derivative? df by ds at DF the point DS. P, here we have PQ vector, right? So, this one. what is the uh, formula? Gradient Many of f at dot, P point dot with, dot with the unit vector in whatever direction you are saying, okay? Yes, sir. Now, what is gradient? Gradient of f is defined as curly f by curly x i cap plus curly f by curly y j cap plus curly f by curly z k cap. So, this is curly f by curly x here is 2x i cap minus 2y j cap plus 4z k cap. Now, your point is 1, 2, 3. So, what is the gradient of f at the point P? So, that is 2 i cap minus 4 j cap plus 12 k cap, right? Now you want a unit vector in the direction of PQ vector. What is the PQ vector? PQ vector is coordinates of Q vector minus P vector. Now what is Q yes. vector? Q vector is 5i plus 0j plus 4k. And what is P vector? P, P point is 1, 2, 3. So this is i plus 2j plus 3k. So this PQ vector is 4i cap minus 2j cap plus k cap. Now the unit vector in the direction of pq is pq vector divided by its modulus. So that is equal to 4i cap minus 2j cap plus k cap divided by 16 plus 4 plus 1. So this is 4i cap minus 2j cap plus k cap upon root 21. So I have divided with the magnitude to make it unit. Now we have to take dot product of this here and this to get the directional derivative. So directional derivative is therefore directional derivative at the point P in the direction of PQ is what was your gradient of F? It is 2i plus minus 4j, 2i minus 4j plus 12k dot product with 4i minus 2j plus k cap upon root 21. So this is 8 plus 8 plus 12, okay, 
upon root 21. How much is this? 16. 8. 28 upon root 21. Okay. So, answer is? Yeah. So, you can just multiply and divide by root 21. But you can leave your answer here also. But in the tutorial sheet, this is how the answer is given. Right. So, you'll get 4 by 3 root 21. Is that okay, Vita? Now the next part is in what direction the directional derivative is maximum? Can you tell me? Ma'am, when the theta is angle, it will be 0 degree. So the directional derivative is maximum in the direction of gradient of uh, f vector. In the direction of gradient of f. The b angle will be 0, right? So, so yes, this yes. is maximum when when the gradient vector and this unit vector, they are parallel, right? So it means that in the direction of gradient vector. So what is that direction? That direction is this, right? So that direction is 2i minus 4j plus 12k. You can divide it with the magnitude, which is 4 plus 16 plus 144. Okay, so how much is that? 164, 2i minus 4j plus 12k upon 164, right? Is that okay, Vita? So this is the direction in which the magnitude is maximum, directional derivative is maximum, and its value is, how much value you will compute is the magnitude of directional derivative, uh, the gradient of f. So what is that? Root 60, 164, right? So whatever this value is, that is the value of the directional derivative in the direction of gradient of f vector, right? Because you have this thing, uh, curly f by curly s p p q is equal to gradient of f dot product with u vector. So this is gradient of f into gradient uh, magnitude of gradient of f magnitude of u into cos theta. Now when it is maximum, this is one and this is one because this is a unit vector. So the value will be whatever is the value of the gradient of f ka magnitude. So that is root of 164, which is 2 root 41. Is that okay, Vita? Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now I want you to try question number 11, everybody. Okay, everybody, please do question number 11. So I'm writing the statement of question number 11. So temperature at a point x y z in space is given by t x y z equals to x square plus y square minus z okay a mosquito located at a mosquito located at 1 comma 1 comma 2 1 comma 1 comma 2 desires to fly desires to fly in such a direction in such a direction that it will get warm it will get warm as soon as possible In what direction should it fly? In what direction should it fly? Did you get the statement? Can you tell me, Vida? Did you understand the statement? So you, you are given a, a space, temperature everywhere in the space is uh, depicted by this function x squared plus y squared minus z. So for example, if you are standing at a point 1 comma 1 comma 1, then the temperature at that point is 1 plus 1 minus 1. That is 1 degree Celsius or whatever units are there. Now there is a point 1 comma 1 comma 2. A mosquito is at that point and it wants to fly in a direction so that it gets warm as soon as possible. So we are looking for a direction in which there is a maximum increase in temperature. Okay, is that okay? Yes, no? Yes, ma'am. So we are looking for a direction 
along which there is a maximum increase in temperature. And that direction is, that direction is direction of gradient of F, okay? So now gradient of F is 2x i cap plus 2y j cap minus k cap at the point 1 comma 1 comma 2, 1 comma 1 comma 2. So that will be 2 i cap plus 2 j cap minus k cap. So the direction is, you can just write this vector or it is a convention that we give direction in terms of unit vector. So we'll divide with the magnitude, which is 4 plus 4 plus 1. So it is 2i cap plus 2j cap minus k cap divided by 3. So this is the required direction. Okay, Vida? Got it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, can you repeat it? Yeah, sure, Vida. You see, you are given temperature in space. Everywhere temperature is depicted by this function x square plus y square minus z. There is a point 1 comma 1 comma 2 where a mosquito is located and mosquito wants to fly in a direction out of all the possible directions. It wants to fly in a direction where there is a maximum increase in temperature because it wants to get warm as soon as possible. Is this clear? So we are looking for a direction where the temperature increases at a maximum rate. So we are looking for a direction in which directional derivative is maximum. Now, what is the direction where the directional derivative is maximum? That is the direction of gradient of F. Clear, beta? So we just computed gradient of F. The definition of gradient of F is, uh, you will do curly F by curly X, I cap, plus curly F by curly Y, J cap, plus curly by curly Z, K cap. So that is 2X I cap plus 2 Y J cap minus K cap. Now at the point 1 comma 1 comma 2, so you will get it equal to 2i cap plus 2j cap minus k cap, right? So now in the direction, because it is a convention to give the direction as a unit vector, so I'm just dividing with the magnitude. Okay, Vita? Understood? Anything you want to ask students? Okay, then you you can prepare for tomorrow's oh, test. Oh, ma'am, we clear me, ma'am. Which one, beta? This fourth question? Yes, mommy. Okay, yes, mommy. First, you have a statement. Curly x upon curly. You may have value one guess size. Ki pe. Like you have x ki uh, value. Wo hai na yaan. No, no, x ki dali. Curly h by curly u will be curly h by curly x into curly x by curly u. Now you will differentiate x with respect to u. What is the derivative of x? when you differentiate it with respect to u, that will be 1 plus 0 plus 0. That is 1. Got it? This is curly x by curly u. This is not yes, x. Okay. And then you have curly h by curly y into curly y by curly u. So when you differentiate y with respect to u, you will treat v and w as a constant. So when you differentiate y with respect to u, this you will get v from here. This will be 0. And you will get w from here. That is why v plus w. Got it? And then curly H by curly Z into curly yes, Z by curly U. So you. when you differentiate Z with respect to U, you will treat V and W as a constant. That is why VW here. Okay, Vita? Got it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Now got it. Yes, okay. ma'am. So please, everybody yes, complete this Thank tutorial you. 6. Okay, are you making notes for tutorial sheets? You're solving it somewhere, I told you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, that should be complete copy. I will ask at the end. Okay, so it should be maintained. Everybody, please uh, start maintaining that copy where you are uh, solving every tutorial sheet. You are doing all the problems. Fine, Vita. So, please complete this tutorial 6. And if you have any doubts uh, in the questions which we have not solved, we can discuss it in the next tutorial sheet. And then we'll start with the seventh one also. Ma'am, Abhi, can I ask a doubt, ma'am? Yes, Vita, please. Uh, ma'am, infinity by infinity form ke jo questions hota hai, ma'am, us mein kya karna hota hai, ma'am? For, for computing the limits? Uh, yes, ma'am. So, if you have infinity by infinity form, you can go for L'Hopital rule. 
मैम आई यूज टू डू दैट मैम बट इसके अलावा और कोई तरीका और देन द अदर थिंग इज यू शुड फाइंड अ फैक्टर व्हिच इज कॉमन एंड यू कैन कैंसिल दैट फैक्टर ओके मैम मैम हम मैम हम सीधा इनफिनिटी बाय इनफिनिटी को ना वन नहीं बोल सकते ना नो 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 राइट सो यू कैन सी बिकॉज़ इनफिनिटी हैज नो डेफिनेशन राइट समबडी डूइंग एन एक्सपेरिमेंट कैन से 10 इज पावर 10 इज इनफिनिटी फॉर मी and someone doing another experiment can say 10 is power 20 is an infinity for me so that is why you cannot say it equal to 1 right so this is a rough example i am giving you but infinity by infinity because infinity is not a defined thing right that is why infinity minus infinity infinity by infinity all these are undefined forms okay beta yes ma'am and you i cannot say this is zero you cannot say this is 1 okay and ma'am ek jo na tube 2 ka ma'am 14th question mein ma'am doubt tha ma'am बाकी लोग मैम रेशो टेस्ट किया था इसमें हमने कराओ इसको कैसे करोगे ए एन प्लस वन अपॉन ए एन राइट सो दैट विल बी रेशो टेस्ट पक्का मैं भी रेशो टेस्ट का ही क्वेश्चन हूँ एन प्लस वन फैक्टोरियल एन प्लस वन रेस्ट पावर एन प्लस वन अपॉन एन फैक्टोरियल अपॉन एन रेस्ट पावर एन सो वी हैव टू सी लिमिट एन गोइंग टू इनफिनिटी दिस इज अ पॉजिटिव टर्म सीरीज दैट इज वाई वी कैन अप्लाई दिस सो दिस विल बी एन प्लस वन एन अपॉन एन प्लस वन raised to power n and 1 n plus 1 more got it yes beta yes ma'am right yes. this and this will cancel right so you will get yahan pe root test am ma'am yahan pe hum root test apply kar sakte hain root test will be difficult beta n factorial raised to power 1 by n you have to compute right so this is yes, what is the limit 1 plus 1 by n aata hai limit n going to e 1 by 1 aa jayega ma'am 1 by e which is less than 1 1 aa jayega beta right therefore convergent okay yahi hai na ratio test if limit is less than 1 okay. convergent greater than 1 divergent equal to 1 inconclusive isme hum bone hi laga sakte apna uh, limit wo journal wala jaise uh, wo n factorial by x by n hota hai wo zero hota hai but okay so but here you are testing the limit uh, the series not the sequence fine oh, so okay take it if you get the limit of this function as zero then nothing happens right because uh, that nth term test will not give you anything and i think limit zero bhi nahi aayegi na limit kitni aayegi n factorial upon n n raised to power n i think this limit is not zero also right uh This we got as a convergent series, na? Yeah, this limit is zero. Fine, fine. Because for a convergent series, the nth term will always go to zero. Fine, beta. But nth term, you have to understand th there is a difference between sequence and series. So when you are testing the convergence of a series, just looking at the limit, you will not get any get anything unless until that limit is non-zero. If this limit is non-zero, then you can say from nth term test that the series is divergent. But is if this uh, limit is zero, then you cannot say anything. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Okay, students. Yes, I have a next class also. So tomorrow I will take your doubts, beta. Please, everybody, you can uh, ask me your doubts tomorrow. Okay. okay Thank you. Thank you, students. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay. Thank you.